The national security dimensions of the, uh, the semiconductor issue are absolutely huge. We're all aware of the important role that these uh, devices play in high-end weapon systems and capabilities. If we want to continue to be able to uh, preserve peace and encourage deterrence around the world, we've got to ensure that we have unfettered access to these capabilities. So from a national security perspective, there's a huge number of dimensions. We won't talk about the tactics of this, but we need to think about what is a... Uh, what, what, what are the implications of a, of a blockade or a quarantine or a cordon sanitaire around Taiwan by the uh, People's Liberation Army Navy from, the, uh, from uh, uh, mainland China? What would that represent for all of us? And, uh, and, you know, you need to think about the worst case and then work things back from there in terms of hedge strategies. And I think that's the optics that are certainly on the mind of many as we try and craft a regional uh, and global partnership of like-minded nations that are committed not just to uh, to sharing the technology and and creating resilience in the semiconductor field, but are also committed to the uh, to the longevity of a nascent democracy of now just over twenty five years duration. The other piece that I think we uh, we need to think of is the, the similar relationship with our international partners. Uh, each of them are reliant on uh, on these semiconductors for the systems that they're designing, and so how do we collaborate in uh, in this effort and better? combine our our efforts. That's a big part of new partnerships that are being crafted around the globe. The uh, the AUKUS, the Australian, UK, United States relationship, a big piece of that, the so-called pillar two, is technological sharing, cooperation and, and research and development and the like. And so there's ability to broaden that and make therefore more robust and more resilient the architecture that supports our collective security going forward. The communication that we have with Taiwan, as this report is published, and as we craft policies that are going to affect Taiwan, is hugely important. Quite frankly, there is an emergent uh, concern on the part of Taiwan business and the Taiwan people that for the West, it's only about the semiconductors. And that as we move these things onshore, as we are in Arizona, or migrate some of the uh, the manufacturing, uh, as has been done to uh, to Korea and Japan and uh, and even Vietnam and other uh, uh, nations in the region, that uh, we won't then care about Taiwan. Interestingly enough, the Chinese Communist Party has seized on this, and you see a lot of this in the Chinese media. Trying, they're they're reaching out to the Taiwanese people and telling them they don't really care about you. It's transactional for the United States. They uh, they just want your uh, your capability to produce semiconductors. That's the uh, the storyline that we have to to disabuse uh, the Taiwanese people of. We have to help them understand that that's not the case at all. That we can craft a win win situation, and we're working hard to do that. That we are committed to their long term. Uh, self-determination that, as we've said for decades, has to be a decision on part of the Taiwanese people, not a decision that's imposed on them from mainland China. So that's the most important message we need to to convey to the people of Taiwan. We care about you. We care about your democracy. We care about your self-determination. And we are here to, uh, to support those efforts over the long term.